Greetings, and welcome back to episode 18 of Exoplace Spyro 3. Just as I thought, the machine room is overrun with birds. To target the birds in their nests, you'll want to use sniper mode. Then, zoom in for pinpoint accuracy. Uh, so yeah, so this is, like I said, uh, or was trying to say in the last episode before I forgot about everything is that uh, this this level is just a good rundown of Agent 9's mechanics. And it's the... Uh, unfortunately... Nice work, Agent 9! Uh, I'm not sure if this is a bird egg or dragon egg. What do you think? Uh, so yeah, by the way, um, earlier you might have noticed that Handel, or Greta, had told us that the Professor had created now the... Now I can switch the gravitometric generator back on. I hope no birds got in there. Now looks like we got more birds to take out. Yeah, man, this fucker just won't shut up. I'm trying to explain things and this won't stop talking. Ooh. Now it looks like these birds are out for blood. Uh, so I might need to hurry this up. Uh, so, yeah, basically, just like with before, you will want to shoot them using the... Yeah, I guess they'll dive bomb you if they get in close, so... You're gonna want to shoot them from a distance. And remember that I, I find that the first person aiming for Agent 9 is perfectly responsive and, you know, really well optimized. You know, it's... I don't have run into any sensitivity issues with the stick, or any issues aiming whatsoever, really. Uh, so it makes him... You know, it's just... It's, it's one of the reasons why I don't understand why people hate Agent 9 so much. Like, his control is perfect. And the gameplay itself is pretty easy to learn. They don't really... It's not like this turns into a full-out third-person shooter. The lab's clear, and it smells better in here already. Follow me outside, where I expect we'll find some Rhinox wearing armor. You'll need a more powerful weapon to defeat them. But yeah, it's like... He controls really well, they explain how his mechanics work pretty well. I just, I don't see what all the hollow blue is about, personally. By the way, there might be a balloon up in here? Let's see if we can't find the damn thing. Oh, well it looks like I did miss a gem, so we'll go grab that real quick. And Sparks died again, so... I'm not gonna be able to use the treasure finder that way. Go grab these gems real quick. And we'll go over to that side room over there. Pretty sure there's a... Yeah, there are a couple of these guys up here, so we'll go ahead and shoot them real quick. Let's see. Uh, so I do have a few criticisms of Agent 9, uh, like with all the other characters, like... So even though he's not armored on his head, I still can't kill him that way. It's gonna make me walk all the way over there to get the, my... My drag Dagron flyback. Uh, one thing that is weird is that his strafing seems to go faster if you're holding uh, in another direction as well. Like if you're holding back. Like if you, as you can see, the strafing is perfectly responsive. It's there's nothing about it that doesn't work or anything. Anyways, uh, we'll have the professor explain this real quick. By my calculations, the bombs in this handy vending machine should be highly effective against armor. Give it a shot. <laughs> Alright, so we'll go ahead and grab some bombs real quick. Uh, by the way, there is a skill... So you have to press the, the square button to throw the bombs. And if it's if it lights up green, then that means that it will actually hit your target. Yeah, and so you gotta use the, the bombs there to blow up the, the panic button. You can open the thing. So the skill point in this level is, if you hit all of those pineapples uh, with with the bombs, then you will get a skill point. So you got you want to make sure that you go ahead and do that. And uh, there's an egg over here as well, and I'm pretty sure there's that guy up there as well, so we'll go ahead and shoot him down. And you, you might remember that there was also a chest in a, in a cave near, near the start of the level as well, so we'll have to go backtrack for that as well. Uh, so Agent 9, I do think is legitimately, f legitimately fun. Uh, we have not played his worst section yet. Uh, but there's another really fun one that we're going to be playing later in uh, Dino Mines. Um, one problem I... One, so the problem with Agent 9 is kind of like a double-edged sword, so to speak. 
On one hand, uh, Agent... By the way, here's another good test of Agent 9's first-person aiming. Which is, I don't know, my personal favorite part of playing as him is aiming in first person. They keep it really, you know, simple and whatnot. Once you kill the last guy, he'll crash and drop off an egg. That we... Well, I already have this egg. Hope that's not a glitch. I do recall running into that before, but I've definitely not played that. Well, as long as it's marked in the atlas... I uh, hope I'm not running into trouble. Uh, but regardless, let's go back, grab some of those bombs, and head back towards the beginning. Uh, the good news, the good thing about Agent 9 is that every one of his sections is different in some way. Uh, this one is most is the most third-person shooter-esque of them all. Uh, the one that we played earlier in Fireworks Factory is a first-person shooter section. You play in first person the whole time and it has the most enemies, which is which is why it's my personal favorite one to play. Uh, the one of the later ones we're going to be playing is going to be a top-down shooter level. That one's my least favorite because uh, the strafing is kind of wonky uh, from top from the top-down perspective. Like when it's over the shoulder like this, uh, the strafing makes more sense uh, because you know you're literally going left. But when it's top-down, Agent Nine will go left from his point of view, you know, and that's that's just kind of awkward to play with. Uh, go ahead and destroy that guy there. Um, and then the fourth one is a first-person uh, rail shooter section. When that one, that one, my opinion is pretty fun because once again, I love aiming in first person with Agent Nine. Uh, but the problem with so on one hand, you get a lot of variety that all utilizes Agent Nine's aiming and shooting mechanics, which is good. Uh, the problem with that is that this is, this is the only level of the bunch that's actually like a third-person shooter level. Where you, where you get to run around in third-person and shoot at people and strafe. Like, you get to do plenty of strafing in the first-person shooter sections, it's not like that goes to waste. But these bombs? We're never gonna be seeing the bombs again in the other three sections. Um, so that, that kind of gets wasted. I would have maybe, I, I think that, while I do think that four sections for each character and then five for Sheila is enough to, uh, you know, get a full, get, s uh, to really explore the mechanics for these characters and really get something out of them, really squeeze something out of them, but, um, I do feel like five sections for each character would have, would have been perfect. It would have been the point where we we got something for out of all of these characters, and yeah, and I do think that cutting it off at just four for these characters was kind of you know a missed opportunity. I don't know. I, I another section, another third person shooting section with Agent Nine would have been would have been perfect. I would have really enjoyed that. But you know, if if the worst thing I can say about Agent Nine personally is that I wanted more of him uh, than. Hardly makes him a terrible character in my opinion, but I don't know. I realize that that some people some people really hate Agent Nine. I'm not really sure why, because his you know his gameplay seems pretty inoffensive to me. Uh, he's he's my favorite character to play as. Thank you very much for saving my laboratory. Uh, now I can resume thinking. Yeah, that's this level done with. Oh. God damn! I'm tired. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. I, mean, I was stayed up late watching uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 03, which is a pretty cool show if you haven't seen it. Recommend it. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I've only seen the first season so far, but pretty solid for a season, all things considered. Uh, is there a balloon up here? There's not. Okay, so yeah, so if you've been keeping up with those balloons, you should be all set with this. But. Yeah, I think Agent Nine's fun. He's my favorite of the secondary characters of the, you know, of the secondary four characters you get in this game. He's my favorite one to play as. Um, I I enjoy his sections a lot. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. Like I I like him more than Sheila for sure. I like him more than Bentley definitely because Bentley's the worst one. Um, I don't know, and like I said, my biggest criticism of him is I wish there was more third-person shooting sections in the game. You know, besides the top one, down one, I guess that technically counts as third-person, but you know what I mean. Wish there was a little bit more of that, because... 
Yeah. Um, yeah, his, his control works just fine. In terms of his personality, he's probably my least favorite character of the four. Because uh, I like how Sheila's kind of a no-nonsense toughie, uh, who also happens to be a woman, which is interesting. Uh, I like Sergeant Bird with his, with his, uh, with Tom Kenny doing his, uh, British Bulldog impression. Mm, yes. A strictly platonic relationship, you understand? And then, you, then you've got Bentley, who's my favorite personality-wise, just because he looks like he'd be this big, brutish, you know, monster. But it turns out he's really uh, intelligent and sophisticated. He's my favorite one. But with, with Agent 9, he's just kind of a hyperactive weirdo. And, you know, that's not really all that appealing. Hello! You must be Spyro. A lot of people are talking about all the things you've done for them. Do you think you could help find my girlfriend, Tara? She went off to raid the tomb of the stone golem, and I haven't seen her since. I'd go look inside the tomb myself, but you know there's all these scorpions and stuff. I do, I, that's, that is one thing I like, another thing I do like about Spyro 3 towards the end is, uh, once you get to the last few stages, uh, they start, um, by the way, I always forget this song is in the game. And it's a, you know, it's a pretty decent song, you know, but it's not, definitely not one of the best tracks in the game, which is probably why I always forget it. And it's, yeah, one of the better looking levels in the game as well. I do like these, uh, and obviously, uh, that was a Lara Croft Tomb Raider parody that we just witnessed. Uh, cause that, that Gus guy was talking about how his, uh, girlfriend Tara went to raid the tomb of the Stone Golem, get it? Like, Lara Croft Tara? Not to be confused with Terra from Season 2 of Teen Titans. Uh, which really needs to come out on Blu-ray, by the way. Because if you have if you haven't watched uh, DC, older DC shows on Blu-ray, uh, you, you're really doing yourself a disservice. Justice League looks amazing on Blu-ray. And Teen Titans especially Teen Titans Season 1 especially looks really good on Blu-ray. Um, yeah, it really sucks that standard definition 480i garbage held such a monopoly on t television for so long because it's like I'm watching TMNT 03 and it's only available on uh, deinterlaced 480i and it looks like shit like the actual animation looks good but it's just like the, the resolution you have to view it in looks like absolute garbage uh, so it really, it really disappoints me I hope we get more blu-ray remasters for more uh, mid you know for more pre-HD series like that because, you know, if you still have the negatives, you can, you know, digital, analog to digital convert that shit over. Yeah, it takes some restoration, but the, the end results look really good in HD, so... Yeah. Traditional animation still holds up. But I digress. Andy, we've rescued Andy. And, uh, we're about to go play, um, Sheila's last section in Spiral 3. I think this was as far as I played uh, the last in my last session, so I guess we'll go over here real quick. I believe the our key is this way, because you might have noticed that there was a chest earlier. I always forget about this level for some reason. I don't just forget about the song, I forget about the level. And it's it's a pretty good level in Spyro 3, so I don't know why I forget it. It's, you know, it's got good mini-games, it's got decent song, it's got it's pretty looking level, you know? It's got one of Sheila's best sections in the game. I don't know, man. It's it's a good stage. I don't know why I forget it. Regardless, we're gonna go grab that key, and we're gonna go head back over and break open that chest real quick. And we'll head back to the, you know. Uh, so I guess a little bit of in-level backtracking going on here, but, you know, comparatively speaking, it's not that bad. Go ahead and break open that chest. And go grab those gems real quick, and that should take care of that. Now we don't have to come back for it later. Uh, yeah, definitely go check out those those series on Blu-ray. Um, yeah, so what was I talking about? I don't know. Yeah, I think I was uh, I was talking a little bit more about the story in this game, why I like it, why I like it so much more than Spyro One and Spyro Two, especially. And I don't know. I feel like I've pretty much covered that. I'm sure that if there's anything I missed, TGX will fill in the blanks in the in the comments. Let's see. How am I gonna get up there? 
But yeah, and at this point we've just kind of got a last batch of levels to go through and then we'll go fight the sorceress. I think after we finish this level we'll go back and uh, play Sparks' third stage, because you actually get a pretty good reward for doing that, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, let's go, let's go play Sheila real quick. This is Sheila's last section in the game, folks. We're, we're knocking things Hi, out. Hi, Spyro. Haven't seen you in a while. I'm just off for a bit of a walkabout right now. You know, sometimes you just long for the simple, old-fashioned pleasures of yesteryear, don't you? And this is easily the most interesting Sheila section in the game. Uh, it's Sheila the Kangaroo. We are, we are playing a 2D platformer in Spire of the Dragon. Uh, you are, so we're playing as, as Sheila again, but this time she's locked to a 2D plane. And uh, yeah, so you can only move left, right, and up and down. Uh, all of her mo all of her move set from the previous stages carries over as well. Sorry about that. I'm back. Had to go take care of a. Whew. I had to go do some running up and down stairs, and it's a. Uh, yeah, not fun. All right, so we're back. Once they get to the halfway mark, you rescue Lester here. And he's a crybaby. Uh, so we'll go ahead and defeat this arsehole right here. And yeah. So basically all of Sheila's mechanics carry over to this this mode. You're, you're still kicking, you're still gun pounding, and uh, uh, you know, considering that this is uh, Insomniac's only attempt at 2D platforming within the, the original Spyro Chilji, uh, it controls a hell of a lot better than Crash Bandicoot ever did, I could say that much. And that's that's kind of what this is supposed to be an homage to. Like, I believe that if we take a peek at our... Uh, Crash Kangaroo. It's what this these eggs are called. Uh, so it's supposed to be an homage to Crash Bandicoot. Because, you know, Insomniac and Naughty Dog were, you know, kind of best friends. They shared an office space. They both pub or developed games for Universal Interactive back in the day uh, before becoming independent and whatnot. Or, I don't know, Naughty Dog basically became Sony's bitch uh, after the PlayStation 1 era ended. But it worked out for them just fine. They've made a lot of uh, high-profile, you know, AAA games uh, since the fifth generation. Uh, but regardless, uh, we, oh, I thought I'd miss that. You go have this overhead destructible chest that I can't seem to hit. Go grab these gems real quick. I always forget that you can center the camera. I used to do that all the time when I played this game, but then I, you know, especially when I play on the PSP, because that's, you know, the easiest way to handle the camera there. Uh, but I always forget that you can I don't know, for some reason I've just gotten used to the shoulder buttons. Uh... Well, Spyro, I bet you're glad to see me. It just happens that I know the, uh, password to open the door to the tomb of the Stone Golem. But, uh, it seems to have slipped my mind for the moment, if you know what I mean. It's just as well. I've heard there are enough riches inside this tomb to pay a dragon's ransom, uh, so to speak. Well, Spyro. <laughs> Very well, then. The password to open the tomb is... Are you ready? <laughs> Gullible! God damn, Moneybags is an asshole in this game. Like, he totally made up that whole password situation. You, you still can't open the door anyway, so you do have to pay him, but... That's one of the reasons, like, technically we can go fight the sorceress right now. Uh, but that is, that is one of the reasons why I wanted to play this level in particular first. Uh, because I wanted to show off... Uh, let's just say that uh, your opportunities to see money bags will be limited after you defeat the sorceress. So, I wanted to show off that cutscene because it's one of my favorite money bags moments in this game. I mean, my God, what a dick! Can't seem to find uh, any fodder anywhere. 
yeah, this this game's certainly getting harder towards the end. Uh, not, you know, not super difficult or anything, but these enemies are starting to put up quite the resistance once we get, you know, this far into the game. Uh, let's see, why don't we go up here first, and we'll come back for that later. Oh, I, gee, I wonder who they're parading. As if we didn't already know, we talk, already talked about Terra Croft earlier. They, they, speaking of which, sounds like a new Tomb Raider game got announced recently. Can't believe I'm talking about that before I talk about Reignited Trilogy in more depth. Oi. Um, I might have to start doing that with the next level, you know, just... Well, well, look at you. Showing up here to raid the tomb after I've done all the work. I spend all day pressing switches and shoving boxes around and you just waltz in here expecting to claim the treasure. Well, might as well have it. Only turned out to be a lousy egg anyway. Yeah, there, I guess that's Insomniac's little nod to Lara Croft. She even has big pointy boobs, just like the Lara Croft from the games at the time. Yeah. Uh... So we ha we only really have after this we have this this climbing section right here, and this one's probably the most interesting use of these weird smelting enemies. Uh, we don't want Spyro to be destroyed in an unfortunate smelting accident, or that'll happen anyway. Good thing we got that egg earlier. That makes things a little easier, but it's just as well we're out of time. Uh, join me in the next episode, gentles and ladies and men. Episode 19, and we will finish off Desert Ruins and head to a new level. Uh, until then, I'm Exo, and I'll see you guys next time.